in Clash, the biggest thing is like understanding what your team's win comp is, like how how you want to play your comp versus the enemy team, and understanding like what is your win condition, right? So let's see here. Let me just analyze this comp here. So what you have is you have a scaling mid laner. You have an anti-scaling top laner. You have a dive. You have two divers on top side, and a defensive ADC with a uh, Milio, which is just also giving you late game. So it's like you have you have two late game carries basically, really realistically, and then you have divers on the top side that can either get stuff going or be antithesis of like you can you can play it in a way that it like doesn't necessarily fall off. Like Renekton doesn't really fall off late game anymore. Uh, what you guys want to be doing is you want to understand, like, you want to set up a game plan. So, you want to plan out where your jungler is starting, and what, like, side is your strong side and your weak side. This game and more being streamed over on my Twitch. Submit your games in my Discord for review, right? And this is, like, just it's just getting you thinking. It's, like, getting you thinking about what's going on in the game, what, what you, why you're drafting what you're drafting. Your strong side this game sh technically should be your top laner because I'm pretty sure Renekton is pretty good into Jax. Jax can win later, but early game Jax, like, the, the Renekton is stronger. And your bot lane is, like, scaling. You're going to get poked by Zyra. Milio's not super useful. You can you can set up some kind of kill pressure on Vayne if she goes over extended, but Zyra should be realistically having the, the lane pressure early, so you guys are going to be losing vision vision you're gonna be losing like lane pressure usually now depending on the caliber of player that's not always what's gonna happen so what you want to do in that case is your your jungler wants to play for the strong side that means that I, what you're currently doing is correct you want to clear your bot side into the top side so that way at around 330 volley bear is on top scuttle and able to either gank for the Renekton, who has Ignite, so it's a kill lane, or counter gank the Lilia, who doesn't really have great gank pressure pre-6. So, what you guys are doing is all correct. Uh, you going on Volley Bear, going red into Krugs, into Raptors, into Topside, you can either, if you have time, you do Wolves into Blue. If you don't have time, because Volley Bear is not the fastest clearer, you're going blue into Scuttle. Which means that what bot lane wants to do... You just want to be... You want to be contesting the wave, but what you don't want to do is shove the wave and get yourselves into a position where you're going to be the gank target. Because for Lilia, the strong side here normally is going to be the bot lane. Because you have... They have Zyra, easy setup for the ganks. They have Vayne, who's an incredible follow-up for like a gank. Normally, what you don't want to ha be in a position is is the lane shoved up in bot lane at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Because that's when you're going to get ganked. Mid lane, you are you got two scalers. Like, pretty much nothing's going to happen here. All you want to do is just try not to get shoved in as much by the, the Malzahar. But honestly, it's like it, it's a Malzahar favored matchup early for sure. He's going to have lane shove. You're just scaling on on a soul. It's like that's that's all your job is. You're you're surviving ganks. You're using your E and then making sure that like you also want to use your E on a soul when the minions are low because it executes them and that gives you star stardust, which is already like getting you scaling. That's what your that's how your champion scales. It's not really with levels. It's with your stardust. Let's see here, the volley bears. Currently on the top side, it looks like he was hovering mid. Uh, that could be okay. It's a really hard to get a kill there for for Asol. So I don't think that's the greatest lane to, to look for a gank on. If you were actually in position, like top side, like I talked about, you actually would have been here for the counter gank. It does look like you possibly might pick up a kill. This is going crazy already, but at least you're getting top side scuttle. Uh, losing Renekton's flash for Lilia's flash, that's... A little unfortunate because now Jax has Flash to set up a counter or like a, a repeat gank, but it's it's overall it's not the worst thing because you're getting the scuttle crap, which gives you protective vision for topside river, gives you a lot more gold. Now you know Lilia has no Flash. You saw that happen. 
what the volley bear wants to do now that's that's a really dangerous trade topside what the volley bear wants to do is go right across mid lane walk straight through mid take bot scuttle overzealous flash wasn't really that close i'm sure you already know it but just looking at it, you were not anywhere close to getting that flash on on the malzahar <laughs> he also had flash up but as long as you're taking bot side scuttle, you've now got complete river control across the map. Lily is flashless, you're flashless as well. But your bot lane is winning. You know Lily has no flash, there's no gank coming bot lane. Like, you're, you're in a really good position. Now, you could either turn this into, because you have complete river control, you can turn this into first rate, which it looks like you guys are because you have bot lane control. You don't have smite, which makes it a little bit risky. This top lane mashup is like on a razor thin wire here. Very nice, but nicely done by the Renekton to turn around that gank that he got that put him down. Uh, should very it's very good for the for the matchup because uh, obviously if you start losing early, he already beats you late. So you guys are getting uh, first dragon, which is good. Uh, what you want to do? Let's see here. I don't know how much gold we're we're sitting on here. Not enough for the quick, uh, the the quiver. I forget the name of Noon Quiver. Uh, you want to stay until you get exactly enough gold for Noon Quiver, and then that's when you guys want to look for a reset. You can clear this this uh, this cannon wave, and then you can look for your reset. Probably it should be enough gold. Now, I'll, something a, a small thing. Uh, Milio has mana issues, so specifically for Milio here, uh, in lanes where you can actually get your gold down like you can actually hit them you always want the uh blue yeah uh, the spell thieves edge just because you're you're gonna have mana issues later it's it's a big problem the relic shield i would only go against like a kill lane just where like they, maybe they're playing like draven leona or something that like will all in and try and kill you and you need that like little bit of extra health you personally but any other time, like, you really want to take the, the Spell Thieves Edge because otherwise you're going to have huge mana issues. And that item makes up the majority of your mana regen early. So we got our Noon Quiver. We got a good reset. This wave is perfect on bot lane. That means that you can either set up a freeze, uh, which is totally fine. If, as long as there's four minions here, you just want to be last hitting. Because this, this vein is way overextended. There's no real gank opportunity on bot lane. You didn't burn any sums. Uh, and Volibear wants to play for topside because the matchup is already going like going crazy up there. You know, you you burn so many flashes. Renekton's gotten that solo kill. You wanna you wanna be playing off of that. You wanna be getting all that pressure. You can see how much damage Renekton is doing topside. This is super crazy, super forward. You're playing into a cannon wave. That's why you guys are taking so much damage. Milio does let you do that though because you can sustain with the W uh, later, which would help. If you had the mana regen item, you know what I mean? You can use your W more to sustain uh, the, the Zaya in that case. But you don't want to be in this situation where you currently are, which is you got your lane shoved up. You're not six. Lily just ding six. And now she's going to gank you guys. You know what I mean? Lilia wastes her R, uses it only on Milio. Would have been, she could have hit both of you, but she, she wasted, could have, would have been a double kill for, for their team. If she got it just by luck. <laughs> But basically, like you, you want up, you want to be playing where your jungler is. So your jungler is on, is clearing to the other side of the of the map. If they're not there, you don't want to be putting yourselves in a position where you have to play up the lane. Now that doesn't mean that you give up pressure. What I'm saying is you just don't, you don't constantly hit the wave to keep it shoving. You know what I mean? You just last hit. You can, if they overextend and you have vision in the river or whatever, and like you know that Lily is too far away to actually follow up the gank, like you fight them, you know, you fuck them up. But you just don't constantly hit the wave to keep it shoving. That way, because that all it's doing is putting you in a dangerous situation. Mid lane, you're just going to keep scaling. It's a scaling matchup. You don't really do anything. You're Looks like you're falling a little bit behind. I think that's mostly off of, it looks like, I don't think the the catalyst is the greatest here. You don't really need the catalyst. Uh, you don't want to be going um, Roa. You actually probably want to go Leandris into. Um, you want to be going Leandris into into this this team comp. There's no 
there's nobody who's really gonna like pop you you know what i mean and you're you don't need to double down on the scaling you're already scaling here malzahar he's not scaling as well as you so yeah go tier tier leandri's rylize it's way better way stronger Try not to use the Zaya ult uh, offensively like you did this there because it, it gets you damage, but like it doesn't get you... It doesn't save you if Lilia comes repeats ganks because you guys have no sums. Now, you still got Vision in the river. You know that she's not there. You do see that your Volley Bear is here, but like it still makes no sense to burn your, your Zaya ult for a little bit of extra damage. Especially because you got Melio. Melio's press of W gives you extra range. Your Renekton's like shitting on this top lane. What you don't want is what's happening here, where he's just getting he's getting punished for winning his lane so hard. And we're we're, we're drawing too much pressure to like to the bot lane here. See, even right there, that was a missed kill because you didn't have you didn't have Zaya R. You know what I mean? Like you could have used your R right there on this on the Zyra ult, and that Vayne is dead now instead of living. Uh, you're getting a lot of plates. Uh, did we drop Rift Herald, like, really early there? Or do we even have... We had Rift Herald, right? Let me re rewind here. Uh, what you don't want to do is right here... Okay. I I'm not going to pause. I'll let it play out. You actually don't want to drop Rift Herald this early. Especially because you just ult and you dive. You didn't need Rift Herald to drop this. What you want to do is you want to take as many plates as possible before, like, you're about to run out of minion waves. Then you drop the Herald. Because Herald automatically is going to take two plates, even through the resistances. But the, when you take when you drop it early and it kills two plates, now that that turret has, like, super resistances, and it's you're not going to take any more. You're not going to get any more gold off of it. So if you, drop, if you wait in that instance, whatever, you do the dive. You didn't need the Rift Herald for the dive. You do the dive anyways. You kill Zyra. You know Vayne just recalled. She has no HP. Then you kill, You take, like, one or two plates, drop the Herald. That's four plates. You know what I mean? That's three or four plates instead of two. Uh, that should be a kill for Volley Bear. That Malzahar didn't know what the hell he was doing. Uh, nice pickup by the Volley Bear. I did see that it looked like the uh, the Aurelian Soul was defending the Raptors. That's pretty good. Uh, not really your job, but, I mean, it works out for you. What you want to always be doing, you want to have your lane tempo here. So we still have, admittedly, bot lane is winning now, but your strong side is your top lane. And we're, we're basically playing antithesis to your top lane here. Your top laner is smoking the enemy top laner. Like, if, if, if Lilia isn't going up there, that he's they're destroying this matchup right now. It's fine to come bot, clear your Krugs or whatever. You want to start your top side so you can cover Renekton early, and then you can clear into your bot side and do Dragon. Here, wait, we're, we walk past our camps. Never a reason, just walk past your camps. There's There wasn't an opportunity immediately. You don't have ult up. You don't have flash. There's no gank attempt that's going to work on a, like, an ult. Uh, uh, Zyra who has ult, uh, uh, Vayne who has flash, condemn. There's no gank happening here. So what you want to do is you want to be clearing your camps. Once you got your ult, you can look for you can look for gank attempts. But without your ult, you're not you're not getting shit. You if if you already had done your Krugs, you could have done your Krugs and then done Dragon, and you would be exactly at this exact tempo anyways. Okay, you had a good... Aesol had a great ult. Aesol, unfortunately, is Oom here. That's really bad for you guys. Uh, they're just... They're just completely missing their... Fo focusing the wrong targets. Aesol, what you want to do is... You've got no mana. You're kind of, like, following. It looks like... I don't know if you're keeping the dragon. Yeah, you're keeping the dragon low. That's totally fine. Uh, you normally, like, in this situation where you got no mana like this... Like, I don't know what happened for your lane to get you in this position. But when dragon is up... You can't be oom like this, you know what I mean? So what you want to do is you want to play in a way where you have at least like a quarter of your mana bar at at that point. I'm not saying you're useless. You actually dropped an ultimate that was really good. It hit both 
uh, I think Zyra and Malzahar. That's good. That's all you really had the mana for. But like, if you had more, you could have done more. But all you want to do, just like you want to think about those neutral objectives when they're up, and try not to burn all your resources before. Especially because you guys are, you're already winning early games, so you you want to be getting every dragon. Like you normally, your your team comp would probably give up an early dragon, like one or two. But you guys are already winning because you're just winning the two v twos. You're winning the one v one up top. So. Next thing you should be doing, uh, I, for some reason, Volibear needs to clear their camps more efficiently here. Uh, you, you went over the, the Krugs, you actually skipped your Krugs, just did red, then recalled. I would have, you want to clear an entire side if you're going to recall, like clear your red side, then recall, and then you can go top side. Otherwise, you just got your camps just sitting here, like gold, experience, that you're just losing out on, because they could have they could have been respawning. You're getting, that way you're making the most of all your resources, because as a jungler, you're a lot less... You have low resources. So you gotta make the most of it. So you... In that instance or whatever, after Dragon, you clear your Krugs. You do your Raptors. You do your Red. You reset. We're playing for our top side now. Uh, now that your your top laner is winning, you're on top side. What you want to do is you want to start Rift Herald. Mid knows that their, their mid laner is shoving top top. But honestly, you guys can 2v3. You want to just start up. He doesn't even need your help to kill this guy. You just want to be starting up the... the you're, you're chasing a, this Jax. He's going to get away. You don't have any CC to chase him. Just start up the Rift Herald. Start getting... Get that Rift Herald down. And you can just use that Rift Herald to snowball your Renekton. Like, Renekton... Renekton put himself in this situation. It's like, this is not the jungler's fault here. So... What, all you got to do... Is just... You want to you wanna make sure that whenever you guys are going somewhere... Like, you're... You're walking one place or another, and nice, nice Zyra R to actually get some damage down. This Zyra's dead, by the way. You don't have me up? Okay. <laughs> that Zyra, like, walked forward into two feathers, and that was dead, let alone, like, six. Uh, this Vayne is dead, too. Just drop W on the Zyra. This Vayne is dead. These guys are getting shit on bot lane. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> We want to unlock. We actually, so even here, you can see I, we, you did end up buying a tier, but it's way too late. You're, I think you got the tier after you finished your, uh, you full finished your Roa. You want to buy that like as soon as you can if you're going to build a tier item. So that way, when you're done with your first item, your tier is already at 360, like it's max stacks. Let me take a look at what you're maxing on, Aesol 2. It feels like your damage is a little low. Nope, you're, do you're doing the right thing. You're just, your damage is going to be low because you went this Roa build. Like, it, it just doesn't do any damage. It, it doubles down on the scaling. The only times I would ever even say, like, you build the Roa build is, like, maybe you're the frontliner <laughs> for your team. But I don't think that's how you guys play. So, usually, it's not going to be the best build. So, uh, Renekton's building the, looks like the Prowler's Claw build. We really need to be protecting Renekton. Like, he's he's been winning his 1v1 matchup, but everybody in the world is coming up top lane to influence it for him. If we can set up any, anybody on the team who has wards, like, I don't, I'm sure you guys, I don't see very many pink wards. If anybody ha has, a, has the pink ward slot, basically, you buy... On any recall, you have 75 extra gold on something. You buy a pink ward. You can drop it in a place where it's defensible. You can drop it anywhere. But that kind of vision helps Renekton in these 1v1s where he's like... He's just getting collapsed on by Lilia. He's getting collapsed on by Zyra because he doesn't know they're coming. That alone helps him enough so that when he's winning... He's got that huge lead that he's accruing. He's not getting punished for it. It's a little bit too far. Looks like... We're trying to be the hero. Uh, we get one trade for kill, which is good for that scenario. Yeah, you guys are over diving. You don't want to dive turrets like that. 
if you're diving somebody, it's because they're alone. You know what I mean? You don't want to dive at the start of a turret clear because you could just kill the turret and then fight them. You know what I mean? Like, you can dive at like if the turret's at like five percent HP because then t somebody just autos it twice and it dies and the the sometimes they overextend because they're they're they think they're safe. Asol can be the hero here. You can probably get these guys off of this. Uh, you probably don't know that Malzahar doesn't have R, but yeah, you can just do what you're doing here. If you drop that in a little bit better position, like, these guys are dead. F they would have ulted you already if they had it. I'd, I'd be, like, trying to hero mode here. Like, going forward, like, these yeah, these guys are fucked. Start flying forward. On on, on a soul, like, you W forward exactly like that. You could you wouldn't have added the flash. If you started Wing, you can cast Q in W, and you would have been chasing that guy the whole way and killing him. So now the lane setups because the I my voice is fucking cracked. The lane setups of how you guys want to be playing this game is you want your 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 split pusher or your TP, which is you got. Uh, Aesol with TP. Technically, the Jack or the the Renekton's not really winning the soul or the one v one anymore. I think the Jacks might be winning now. So you do like you want your Aesol bot lane here. That way, you guys are all on the tops of the map. Enemy team is all on bot side. You guys need to start this Baron. Like they're 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 trolling. They don't know what's going on. And okay, for what just happened, Aesol, you don't want to recall when your team starts Baron, even though you're TPing to it. You don't need to TP to it. You understand? Like, if you just stayed in lane, you're keeping up pressure. You can see two people bot lane. You don't have to TP to this. When Like, if two people are bot lane, that means at most three are going to show up to the Baron, and it's a 3v4. And one of the people you saw was the jungler. So it, you guys even knew it was free. You always want to have your split pusher on, in the long lane. Everybody being mid here is cool and all, but, like, you do, with three people, you're going to take this turret. With four people, you, like, you're going to take the turret. You know what I mean? So if three people are there and one person's pushing up a side lane, like bot, which is like, hitting your turret bot lane, that's gold you're losing out on. You'd actually, you'd be able to turn this into this mid inhibitor turret, bot lane tier two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was looking, I mean, I'm, I'm. I don't really. I didn't see any opportunity so far where you could have ended the game, but like I, that might happen in a little bit. Great kill on their wave clear. This is a fine dive. What you want to do now is you guys want to not go this crazy. You want to get there with your wave reset aggro. Get this. Jax just died top. The only person who's alive is actually Lilia. You actually. This is literally the the attempt right now. You could end the game right here. You guys are just just walk forward, press W. No, everybody, everybody come mid. End the game right here. This is the, they're not up. You could have taken this. And the worst thing that happens is they respawn while you guys are hitting Nexus. And guess what? They're not going to kill you before you 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 end the game. So yeah, this is literally that opportunity you're talking about right there. Renekton just walked past that turret, ease over the wall. All five of you are there. It's only Lilia. She's in the Nexus, not or in the fountain, not doing anything. Like you guys could have just ended. You had you had Melio with ultimate up with W. He can you could just press R there as soon as you guys start hitting the tower. Uh, I don't even know what items you have. You have Ardent Sensor. Everybody gets attack speed. Everybody that the those two turrets they're dead. The game's over. You guys already won. This is a 21 minute win. I'm sure you guys probably talked about it, it sounds like, afterwards, but you gotta really be... When you're in their base, and they die as you are taking the inhibitor, you can end the game. Especially when the only if the only person left has no wave clear, the game's over. Lilia, no wave clear. Only wave clear on their team is Malzahar and Zyra. And Zyra, because she's a sport, not gonna wave clear as good as anything else. Okay, we're all grouping bot lane. Not really a reason to do that. They're overextending, but there's no real reason for everybody to be coming bot lane here. Should just have you should have one person going up top side. That should eat, that should be the Renekton or the the Asol getting that wave pushed in. 
This is crazy. Mauzahar is still walking forward. This guy is super dead. <coughs> right here, you guys continue pushing bot. You don't have a mid wave to end here. So you push bot, you take you take the inhibitor, you look at how fast you've taken the turrets to the inhibitor to find out whether or not this is an end angle. More than likely it's not going to be. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna take this turret, you're gonna take this inhibitor. They're gonna have Lilia, Jax, Vayne, and Zyra up. Not really an opportunity to end. I would then leave. You clear these waves. Go do Dragon. Reset. All group top down. Because you've, you've taken the other two inhibitors. Okay, you want to reset, spend all that gold you guys just accrued, and you're going to go to your top side. You're going to go into their jungle side, you're going to set up your vision, Any, you're going to fight anybody you see because you're going to be full five on that side. Uh, if you get a pick off on anybody, that can be your angle to look for the end, but you can more than likely just at least take the top lane inhibitor, which is free. And a triple in hips, that's, uh, the game is over. Whether or not you end the game early or you end the game later, when you take triple inhibits the game, it's so unlikely that a team comes back from it. What you don't want to do is that right there where you just take a 1v2 uh, against people who are not weaker than you anymore. Because if you're, your your gold lead is all in Zaya. You, have, you had like an 800 gold lead over Jax. That's really it. But that's a 1v2. A little bit, little bit too ham. If instead you waited, your whole team set up, got into the top side. You can see Baron is spawning. You guys work together. You can start pushing around top side. Like you, you just want to think more. You know what I mean? Like you want to be thinking about like, what do we need to do to win to end the game here? It's like, do we need to do? Does does Renekton need to take that one that one v two and like win like to win the game? No, you guys are up 10k gold. You don't know you're up 10k gold, but you're up a lot of gold. You're up two inhibitors on them. You just go topside. <laughs> it's tr the the truth is, it's like it's not just you guys. It's everybody. Everybody doesn't think in this game, and if you think, you're you're already like you're you're 50 more likely to win than your opponents because everybody they're autopiloting. They're not thinking. They're just doing stuff without thinking why they're doing it. Lily is just running out doing raptors, even though your team is so far ahead. That they could kill her instantaneously if they found her. Like, she's just throwing the game because she's not thinking. I don't know if Milio ult works on suppressions. I don't think he could have ulted, uh, ulted you out of Malzahar ult. Because it's the same thing as... It's the same thing as Mikhail's, which doesn't work on suppressions. It might work, to be honest. I don't really know. Because as far as I understand, it's, it operates as McHale's, which doesn't. QSS is the only thing that clears a suppression. I've never played against the Malzahar as Bilio, because nobody plays Malzahar. Okay. This is crazy. I don't know how Renekton got into a situation where they're being chased down like this, but... They don't obviously want to be in that situation where your team is taking Baron, but your team should not come help you. It, it's uh, it's kind of on your own there. This Lilia didn't press R and is griefing. Even without two people, you guys just cleared the top wave. Lilia can't stop you. Vayne can't stop you. You're gonna take the. You're gonna take another inhibitor top. You got. You just push it. Push up. Yeah, I mean, I he didn't need help, but you, he also shouldn't have been in that situation. Like when when Baron is up, the last thing you want to do is like be ahead of your team because they're gonna kill you. Then they're gonna come to the Baron. But you, it's like if you put you push your wave and then you come to the Baron. That's that's what happened. Like anytime you're on the same side as as the neutral objective like that, you just don't want to be doing that. If you're on the other side of the map, it's totally fine. 
It's like, hey, if you're bot lane, you do that all the time. It doesn't matter because what you're trying to do is draw people away from the Baron. But what he was doing is drawing people to the Baron. Now, you guys are really up a lot of gold, but you still didn't really set up vision or anything. So that technically could have been a 50-50. You know what I mean? Even here, you guys have uh, Baron. This Aesol needs to reset. Just re recall anywhere you're safe. You want to TP back to, like, mid lane? You guys don't even have to wait for this dragon. Like, what you could be doing is you could be pushing up mid together. You could be pushing up top together. And you just take two inhibitors as well. Anytime, like, if, if, if vision is a really big problem for you guys, like, this is this is my advice, right? Anytime you have 75 gold, okay? And you bought your items or whatever you needed. Buy a pink ward, right? I'll pause this because it's about to get a fight. You buy a pink ward. You drop... If you don't want to, like, constantly buy pink wards, that's fine. But guess what? Drop it here. Drop it in this bush. Drop it in this bush. Drop it in this bush. All those places, when you're winning, the enemy team ain't coming there to clear that ward. And you've got that vision the rest of the game. You don't have to buy another pink ward because you now have control of vision, like, in the river, at both entrances of the river. You've got it in a, a safe spot for your jungle that lets you know if you're getting ganked around mid lane. You don't have to buy a pink ward, then drop it, like, up here, you know, in the middle of the team fight. That's The support's going to be doing that. Maybe one other person, usually the jungler, is doing that, right? But I, 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 can't, uh, I can't ping, unfortunately. I'm trying, but, like, basically, the entrances to the jungle. Like, it's, like, for, for your side of the jungle, it's, like, on the other side of the red buff. On the other side of the blue buff here. On the other side of the top lane right here. Like, those... Those places, <laughs> those places, you put them there, nobody clears those, okay? Especially when you're already winning. Now, early on in the game, people will clear those. But you can even put them, like, even in a more defensive spot. It's like, as long as that vision's out there, it, it, you guys can see what's going on. Somebody's going to walk by this up top lane. They're never going to clear this bush. They're going to walk up, like, at, at this point in the game, they're going to walk here and then walk into the river and see what's going on. You see them top lane now. You know you can take a 4v5. Your support and your jungler, they're gonna be putting they're gonna be putting pink wards up front. Cause that's kind of their job. <laughs> to to deny vision or whatever, create pressure. Using your sweeper. You'd see the enemy jungler here doesn't even have a sweeper. <laughs> At least it's the support's job. It's the support's job to deny vision. Like that's just what that's what you do. If you're constantly buying like what you always want to you always want to have a pink ward like in your inventory and like you just drop it you know you drop you drop it somewhere to deny them vision you can see they drop two wards like over here you put the you put a pink ward right here in the middle of the river it's like they can't see shit but yeah so it's like just make sure like you don't have to put too much thought into the vision like there's there's lots of tips about how to get like great wards off with, you know, like, in certain spots, you can get it a little bit further away and stuff like that. But that's not important. What's important is you guys are just getting some vision down, right? Because, like, you're if you're already struggling with it, it's like buying one pink ward, okay? Start buying one. Buy two pink wards a game. Like, that's, your, that's, that's a goal that, like, already gets you guys a huge significant advantage. I guarantee you, the enemy team, they didn't fucking buy pink wards. Think about how the advantage you have over them, because they're not buying that shit. They don't know where, like, they don't know where they're fucking going. They're walking into blind shit. It's like the Vayne is gonna face check into Volley Bear, and then you just get a free kill. Anyways, I turn this back on direct to camera and on pause. Like, so, like, right even here. You can't guarantee that you guys have, like, complete vision control because you don't have any pink wards around the area, like, guaranteeing you didn't miss any wards. And Aesol just went back to base, right? I don't know. I think he just bought a second needless. He doesn't have a slot for it. But, like, this pink ward in the back of the pit, that, that shit doesn't do anything. Like, you know what? That, that's, that, that pink ward is what red team would put down. Blue team puts a pink ward in the, in the river. Weird fight, but it works out for you guys. It was like, it, it started a lot weird. Uh, you guys have a wave mid, you have a wave bot. You can end the game. It's only a little yet. I'm assuming you probably do, because it looks like the timeline ends, but...
same scenario. It looks like they, they surrendered, but yeah. It's like, yeah, just like the, the simple things. Like, um, you guys start doing those simple things, you're going to get so much ahead of your opponents. Like, they're not, they're, they're, they're not doing those things. And that's like an, it, that's an advantage that like, it doesn't take much to think about, like, but it will it will net you wins because they don't they can't see what's happening and when people can't see what's happening I say this whenever people are playing Nocturne people press R on Nocturne the the, in, uh, the entire enemy team of the Nocturne like screams like I can't see I can't see like they don't know what's happening right join my Discord and submit your games for the next VOD review.